Okay, so today, for our Writing About Literature assignment under character, I will be talking about Vanishing by Deborah Willis. So a brief overview. Vanishing by Deborah Willis is a short story about a girl named Tabitha whose father disappears. The story is a journey through Tabitha's life and highlights the impacts that lo losing her father had on her over time. The title Vanishing describes how her father slowly faded away instead of just disappearing one day. So about Tabitha. When we are introduced to Tabitha, she's only 10 years old. In Vanishing, Tabitha is somewhat of the protagonist. She's a curious young girl who spends most of her time with her mother, Marlene. One day, when she comes home from a shopping trip with her mother, she finds the attic, which served as her father Nathan's office, empty. Tabitha is hopeful that one day she will run into her father or find out that it was all a joke. However, deep down, she knows that it's unrealistic. As she grows up, the impact of losing her father compound. The impacts of losing her father compound. At a young age, she develops nightmares, which may be from when her father used to read her stories before bed, which would frighten her. A few years later, she drops out of high school to get a job as a secretary. Everywhere she goes, she sees visions of her father. She lives in Brooklyn and starts acting. The traits in which she possessed since losing her father cause her to consistently be cast in roles involving mentally unstable and often suicidal characters. Although she is well liked by others, over time she begins to let herself go. She is described as fat, poor, and tipsy. Multiple times throughout the story, it is referenced that she is involved with substance abuse. Such abuse is what leads her to rehab. Here, she meets her future, future husband, Stanley. They get married and live comfortably for a while, that is, until Marlene passes away. After her mother's death, Tabitha loses connection with Stanley and decides to leave him. She moves to another city where she gets a job at a bookstore. She lives, reminiscing on the memories of her dad, and knowing that where she has landed is most likely where she'll be for the rest of her life. She runs into Lev, one of her dad's old friends, and they're both in the same situation, out of touch with their better self and abandoned by love. Now, traits that we see from Tabitha, um, she's very curious, so she likes to go where she's not allowed, um, and she likes to experiment with substances just to see what, you know, she'll feel like. She's a negative person, so when she came home the first time to open the attic door, she assumed that her father had hung himself, and she gets very descriptive about what that would look like and what she'd pictured. And any form of hope that she develops, she ends up invalidating herself. Um, she's unsure and she's constantly moving around from place to place, uh, job to job, and she never seems to settle. She's unhappy because she's lost so many people in her, la in her life. Um, and in fact, through the story, there's not a single relationship that uh, succeeds in the end. Um, and even the casting agencies cast her in sad and, like I said, suicidal roles. Um, she's disturbed, which I would classify as an underlying trait. Um, it's more of a smaller detail, but multiple times um, the author references how she has nightmares and night terrors, even you know past a young age. Um, and as she gets older, these terrors, um, they continue. Um, so I think that... Based on this information, we can assume that she's disturbed mentally in some kind of way, um, probably from what her dad used to do to her as a child uh, before bed. Um, and she is described as a round character, so we are able to watch her grow and develop from an innocent, curious young girl to an out-of-touch adult who has let go of all things important to her. Um, therefore, she's a round character, uh, because a round character is a character that we are able to see develop. So now let's talk about Stanley. So Stanley is a short-lived love interest of Tabitha. Stanley met her at rehab, where he was soon to fall in love with her. The day they were released, Stanley proposed to Tabitha. Fast forward two months and they're married. Although they lived comfortably for some time, after the death of Marlene, Stanley felt foreign to Tabitha, and she was no longer comfortable with him. She left him and moved away, leaving us to never hear from Stanley again. So we don't hear a lot about Stanley except for the um, light analysis that um, Tabitha gives us. Uh, when she explains how she met Stanley, and he is explained by Tabitha as shy, honest, um, shy and honest, and as we aren't given any development except for their relationship slightly, um, we never get to watch him as a character develop, and therefore he is a flat character. Okay, so next we get to talk about Nathan. So Nathan is the father of Tabitha and the husband of Marlene. He spends most of his days working alone in the attic, which he uses which he uses as an office. He is meticulous yet unorganized. To him, everything has its spot, yet to the ordinary eye, his office appears, appears scattered. One day he goes missing. He chooses to 
bring sorry he chooses to bring a few things with him thus justifying that he left willingly even though his character is taken from us before we meet him he we can learn plenty about him through tabitha's memories he is ingenious and stubborn all he does is write day after day year after year in the forbidden attic he doesn't like it when people disturb him however one day when curious tabitha pokes her head up the hatch he invites her in as a most disconnected person from the family for nathan to allow these visits on a um to allow these visits regularly is uncharacteristic it's hard to tell whether he enjoys her presence or if he just finds her useful for reading his scripts to him at one point he stops meeting with tabitha for quite some time he later describes that he had stopped writing and is lacking whatever he it is he used to have. He fears to tell his wife about it, as it would break her heart. Soon after he tells Tabitha this secret, he vanishes, never to be seen again. Okay, so some of the traits um, for Nathan is that he's very strict. Um, even though he's very disconnected from the house, uh, he seems to be the alpha. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, people fear to disturb him, uh, come up the hatch and visit him in the attic. He's very intelligent as described by the narrator and Tabitha at the very end uh, when lying to him says that she could never fool him because he's very sharp um, and also he's very firm on his positions and that is described when he is arguing with one of his friends which we'll get to later. Uh, he appears to be dissatisf dissatisfied um, and at one point in the story he leaves the table in the middle of having guests over to go get work done however his profession is being a writer which leads me to believe that he's never satisfied with his work. Um, even after his death, uh, his works are celebrated by many and they're created into plays and, and people perform them and he becomes somewhat of a legend. Yet he is never content with the quality um, of his product. And when I say death, I mean um, disappearance or um, assumed death because he's never found. Um, and you can further back this statement up when you look at uh, how his works were described. In between the smudged letters from the typewriter, he makes up, uh, he makes constant edits, um, and these constant edits are on these pieces of paper that are supposed to be his final products. Furthermore, it could be hypothesized that this was the reason why he left. He was leaving to go find something, something that would fulfill his uh, dis dissatisfaction with uh, his writing, and he wasn't able to achieve that or find that thing from the comfort of his home. Nathan also seems to be obsessed with his writing um, because even when he was unable to write, he was spending hours every single day trying to get past this block. Um, he also became, uh, this also became the only reason why he was able to reestablish a relationship with his daughter because daughter because he was using her to um, read, the, read his scripts back to him. Thus, he could benefit from her presence. He'd also be described as a round character, um, because even though we lose him at the beginning of the text, through Tabitha's memories, we are able to see him develop as a character and slowly vanish um, from his family. So next we're going to talk about Marlene. So Marlene is the mother of Tabitha and the wife of Nathan. Like Tabitha, she's not allowed in the attic. Her relationship with Nathan seems to be very traditional. She does the dishes, she cleans the house, and she completes other tasks around the house while her husband sits in the office all day working away at his typewriter. Due to traditionalism, or to this traditional due to this traditionalism, Tabitha spends the majority of time of her time with her mother, thus allowing them to be very connected. After Nathan vanishes, her sister um, B starts living with them. After Tabitha moves out, the two sisters live together in harmony, not fully content with where their lives have ended up. Still, Marlene puts in a great deal of effort. She is still stable and takes care of herself. This is until her sister passes away. With B gone, Marlene seems to give up on life. She loses all sense of propriety and develops a lazy attitude towards life, living for what seems to be no reason. A year later, she dies of a stroke, leaving the world with nothing. So in terms of traits for Marlene, she's a very determined woman until she isn't. So throughout the whole story, she's continuing to take care of herself despite her losses. Um, and even though it seems that she's lost everything, um, living with her sister is enough to keep her going that is until her sister passes away and at this point um, she gives up on life and it's described that she's not taking care of herself anymore not closing the door when she goes to the washroom just being um, or being put in a very unfortunate state uh, she seems to be a person pleaser so at the beginning of the story the way that she carries herself um, and when Nathan 
a Nathan's friend brings a girlfriend who they've never met um, and who is unexpected company. Um, she welcomes him into her home and uh, really shows off that she likes making people ha happy. And then at the end of the story, she's lazy and she lacks reason to live. Um, and it shows that through, like I, what I said earlier, with how she stops taking care of herself, how she's actually tired, she's not closing the bathroom door, and stuff like that. So next, we're going to talk about Marlene's sister, B. Um, she comes and go, she comes and goes from the story, and is mostly a supportive character to Marlene. Um, her being the last thing uh, that Marlene had to keep her mentally stable was probably her greatest impact. Her passing is what brought the downfall of her sister, um, and B would be described as a flat character. Other than that, although she is um, a, a somewhat more involved uh, than other characters, the actual traits that we are given for her, um, well, we're not given many traits, uh, and she, she seems somewhat disconnected from the story, and she really only pops in when Marlene is mentioned, and so they're never really seen uh, without each other. So next we're going to talk about Lev. So Lev is an old friend and potentially lover of Nathan. Um, this might be a little bit controversial because it is they they both have um, female significant others, um, but the way that Lev is described um, to Nathan and the way that the two of them are described um, shows undertones that there may have been somewhat of uh, like romantic history between the two of them. Uh, he is described as a very handsome young man engaged to be married to Sophia. He is a lawyer, and, it is, and he is said to be very confident in his opinions. Although Lev and Nathan are exceptionally close friends, they disagree on just about everything. Years after the disappearance of Nathan, Lev runs into Tabitha at the store. He is described to his loss of his handsomeness and confidence. The narrator leads us to believe that this is due to the divorce with Sophia, who left him as soon as she became a successful lawyer. So some traits that we see some le from Lev is that he's very confident, uh, his good looks, above average intelligence, and beautiful wife all fuel his confidence, um, and it seems as though he's insecure about his feelings, um, as showed at the end of the at the end of the book or at the end of the short story, um, he has a very high class at the beginning, but then, as those things that give him this high class, so his good looks, um, his intelligence, his wit, and his obviously beautiful fiance. <laughs> Um, leave him as they slowly start to fade away his true self starts to come out about he, how he's more insecure um, without those things um, and he'd be described as a round character because we are able to watch him grow and develop um, like I said from that handsome confident young man into this less handsome less confident less intelligent um, and lacking love um, older older adult um, thus he is a round character so next we're going to talk about um, Sophia. So Sophia is the fiancé of Lev. When we are introduced to Sophia, it is stated that her beauty causes other women to feel ashamed of themselves. She doesn't wear makeup, and she's described as somewhat of the perfect woman. This further justifies her engagement with Lev, as he is the male counterpart to her. What I mean by that is that they are both described as smart, um, above-average uh, looks in terms of beauty standards, um, and very youthful, thus they're somewhat of a power couple and a match made in heaven. Um, their engagement is recent, and Sophia is in the process of becoming a lawyer just like him. However, when she finds her success and becomes a lawyer herself, she leaves Lev. Um, some traits of Sophia, once again, she's very beautiful, and she makes other women feel bad about themselves, uh, and she's disloyal. Her interest in Lev seems to only be there while he's in his prime and he's successful and he's young and handsome as soon as he outgrows those certain characteristics Sophia um, not only has she found her own success but she feels as though uh, she doesn't need to be with love anymore so she leaves him and I would describe her as a flat character other than her career developing over time um, and her somewhat uh, not needing Lev anymore I think that is more dependent on Lev's changing character as opposed to hers I feel like that trait is probably something that she had before um, and it's just showing her true colors a little bit more but I would still describe her as a flat character because I don't really see any development from Sophia uh, and yeah thus we can classify her as one 
Okay, so that is everything. That is a breakdown of all the characters in um, Vanishing by Deborah Willis, and I, uh, I hope you enjoyed.